So today, we will discuss the general principles of taxation and I hope you will learn a lot from this. Our objectives in this lesson is for you to be able to visualize the overview of the Philippine tax system, to explain various principles and theories governing the Philippine tax system, to evaluate the similarities and differences of the three inherent powers of the state, to summarize different taxes and tax items, and the escapes from taxation, and finally, to criticize the moral, legal, and ethical consequences of non-payment of tax. So, if you're ready, let's start. It is composed of three branches. These are the executive branch, the judiciary, and the legislative branch. These branches work together to protect and preserve the right of the Filipino people. To do so, the government is imbued with three powers. These powers are considered inherent powers of the state. And these are first, the police power, which is the power to promote public welfare by restraining and regulating the use of both property and liberty. Second, we have the taxation power, which is a power to enforce contribution to raise government funds. And lastly, we have the eminent domain power, which is the power to take private property for public use with just compensation. These powers are considered inherent powers of the state because they exist, coexist rather, with the state. And there is no need for a law or a regulation so that these powers may be exercised. Actually, without these powers, the government cannot exist. There are a few similarities of these powers. First, they are inherent in the state, meaning, since the beginning of time, these powers exist already with the state, with the government. Second, they exist independently of the constitution, meaning we don't have to enact laws or to write laws so that these powers may be exercised. Third, they are the ways by which the state interfere with private rights and property. Fourth, they are all legislative in nature and character, which means only the Congress and the Senate can exercise in general with these powers. And finally, they presuppose an equivalent compensation. There are also differences of these powers. So we will tackle as to categories. First, as to concept and purpose, the police power is a power to make laws for the welfare of the public, while taxation power is to enforce contribution and raise funds. And the eminent domain power is to take private property for public use. Police power is not just about the police or the armed personnel we know. This can also include the regulation of properties by licensing or the institution or building of hospitals, education, and some infrastructures. So these are the product of the exercise of police power. While taxation power, it is solely exercised to raise funds because the police power of course needs funds so we can build buildings hospitals educational buildings and so on the imminent domain power is more on taking private property for public use for example if, if a property is or needs to be converted so it may be used for public the government can do so with just compensation to the owner of such property the next category is the authority the government as the police power government only or its political subdivisions so police power cannot be delegated to anyone private well, taxation power is also the same. Only the government can tax 
or can subject anything or something to tax. Whereas in eminent domain power, it may be granted to public service companies. Like for example, in the construction of buildings or construction of roads, national highways, the government can delegate the power to take private property to a private corporations doing the construction. As to scope, the police power is broader in application. As I have said, police power includes the protection and the preservation of the liberty and rights of the Filipino citizens. So this can include the construction of educational institutions, schools, buildings, national highways, hospitals, and etc. As to taxation power, it is plenary, comprehensive, and supreme, but not absolute. It is plenary because it taxes everyone, and everything, and everywhere. So, isag-asa pa ka sa Pilipinas, as long as you're covered in our law, you will be subject to tax. It is supreme because it can the tax rates can range from 0 to 30% or to whatever rates the government think that is right. Whereas for eminent domain power, it is merely to take private property. So if there is funds needed it will to compensate the owner, it will be coming from the funds collected by the exercise of taxation power. As to effect, the police power is to make laws for the general welfare. While taxation power, the effect is to take money to support the government. At this point, we will focus our discussion on taxation power alone. In this discussion, we will cover the concepts, principles, and theories of taxation. Under the concepts, we will discuss the purpose, the nature, and the characteristics of taxation. Under principles, we will discuss the three principles of taxation power, and these are the fiscal adequacy, equality, and the administrative feasibility. Under theories, we will discuss four items. We have the necessity theory, the lifeblood theory, the benefits protection theory, and the jurisdiction over subject and objects. Let's focus first on the concepts. The primary purpose of taxation is actually to raise revenue. As I have mentioned before, without taxation power, the government cannot have enough funds to support the exercise of police power. In reality, majority of the incomes or revenues of the government are coming from taxation power. However, aside from raising revenue, taxation power may also be used for regulatory or sumptuary purpose. Meaning, the go government or state can impose tax to regulate its people. For example, today, our sin taxes or the taxes on liquor and cigarettes are higher compared to the last decade or last years. This because the government wants to protect us by limiting our consumption of these seen products. Or for example, um, the imposition of the VAT, the 12% VAT. Before, in 2006, the VAT rate is not 12%, but only 10%. Since the consumption of the goods increased, then the VAT also was increased from 10 to 12%. Taxation power may also be exercised for compensatory purpose. Since we benefited from the government, we enjoy the benefits from the government, directly or indirectly, we are supposed to compensate the government for the benefits we enjoy. Nature of taxation. Taxation power is plenary. It is plenary because it reaches everyone, everything, and everywhere. Even if you're in the provincial areas or in the city area, 
anyone, even a child, is paying tax. Even an unborn baby is, also, is already consuming tax. It is also comprehensive because the rates that the tax may be imposed to us ranges from 0 to 35 percent. The highest percent of tax so far in the Philippines is 35 percent and that is the individual income taxation. It is also supreme because the government can choose whatever or whoever or what subjects may be subjected to tax. However, even if it is plenary, comprehensive, and supreme, taxation power is not absolute because it is subject to limitations, which we will be discussed later. Characteristics of taxation Taxation power is an inherent power of the state. Again, it coexists with the government. Without this power, the government cannot exist. It is also a power exclusively lodged with the legislative body of the government, meaning not the executive or the Supreme Court can impose tax. Not the president, not the vice president, not even the Bureau of Internal Revenue. It is only the Senate and the Congress can enact and impose tax laws. This power is only exercised by them. It cannot be delegated to the other branch of the government. It can be delegated, however, to the lower or the local government units through its legislative branch. Taxation power is also subject to inherent and constitutional limitations, which we will discuss later. The principles or canons of a sound taxation system. There are three of them. First, the fiscal adequacy. Under this principle, taxation power must be exercised enough to fund the government needs to be adequate. Meaning to say, the government cannot exercise taxation power if the funds generated from it is not enough or more than enough it should be adequate the second principle of taxation system is equality or theoretical justice under this principle taxation power cannot be exercised as abusive because it should be based on equality meaning to say the taxpayer should pay based on its ability to pay, hence the ability to pay principle. The third principle is the admin feasibility. This means that in the exercise of taxation power, it should be feasible enough to be implemented and to be monitored. For example, today, the Bureau of Internal Revenue has already implemented the electronic filing and payment system. This is due to the need of the taxpayers for a more convenient way of filing and payment of tax. Taxation. There are four theories of taxation. Number one, the necessity theory. Under this theory, taxation power exists out of needs meaning to say we have a need we have a need to support the government we need to raise revenue to support the actions programs of the government second theory we have the lifeblood theory under this theory taxation power is considered as the lifeblood of the government without taxation power the government would be paralyzed without the funds needed to operate it in the third theory, the Benefits Protection Theory, it underscores the principle that the individuals, the citizens, us, the Filipino citizens, benefit from the government and that it is incumbent for us to pay the government for the protection that we enjoy. This is based on a symbiotic relationship between the people and the government. The fourth theory 
is a jurisdiction over subject and objects. Under this theory, the government can impose to anyone and everything or anything under its jurisdiction. That's why the overseas Filipino workers, although they are not taxed in the Philippines for their incomes abroad, however, when they return in the Philippines, they will be subject tax. Also, for, ex for instance, if these OFWs have properties in the Philippines which enjoyed benefits from the government by means of protection, then these properties are also subject to tax. As discussed earlier, taxation power is supreme. It can tax any person or any object or any subject within, it, within the jurisdiction of the government. However, it is not absolute because it is subject to inherent and constitutional limitations. So at this point, we will focus on the limitations that should be observed when exercising taxation power. There are five inherent limitations. These are called inherent limitations because even if the constitution or even if there is no law exempting or limiting the power of taxation, still, these limitations should be observed. So first inherent limitation is public purpose. In the exercise of taxation power, the government should consider that the funds to be generated from taxation power should be for public purpose only, meaning to say, no funds should be appropriated or allocated for personal or private purpose. Second, exemption of the government. The government is exempted from the tax, even if it is the same which is taxing the people or the citizens. The reason for this is that it will be illogical for the government to collect taxes from itself. Third, non-delegability of the power to tax. Taxation power is solely legislative in nature, meaning to say, only the Congress and the Senate can create tax laws. The President, the Executive Branch, and the Supreme Court or the Judiciary cannot make tax laws. They can only interpret as for Judiciary or implement tax laws as for the Executive, but they cannot impose or create tax laws. If the government should delegate the taxation power, it can be delegated, however, only to the local government units through its legislative body also. The fourth inherent limitation is territoriality. Taxation power only operates within our territory. The Philippine government cannot tax or impose taxes on persons or objects or any subjects outside from its jurisdiction or territory. For instance, we cannot tax the Japanese people because they are in Japan. We can only tax them if they go here in the Philippines. And the last inherent limitation is international committee. An international committee is an agreement between two or more countries which exempts certain individuals or persons or objects from taxation. For example, in the case of foreign diplomats, when they come here in the Philippines, they will not be subject to tax because it is an exemption which is based on international committee. So these are the five inherent limitations. We can easily memorize this through a mnemonics, PENTI. There are few constitutional limitations. Again, these are constitutional limitations. Taxation power is not granted or not enacted by the Constitution. However, the Constitution provides limitation from the exercise of such power. So, number one, observance of due process clause and equal protection clause. In the exercise of taxation power, the, the Congress or Senate must always observe the due process clause and equal protection. For example, it is not proper or it will be unconstitutional for the government to arrest someone who is not paying tax without evidence or without first undergoing to due process. 
Number two, uniformity, equity, and progressivity of taxation. These three terms are actually different. When you say uniform or uniformity, it means that a certain tax law should be applied not just to one area or one aspect or to one person, but to all persons or to all areas under it. For example, if the government tax the Filipino citizens of rates 35%, then everyone should be taxed with 35%. It, not, it must not be selective. It must be uniform. Another example, the VAT of 12%. The VAT of 12% is, or is applied to everyone regardless of the price or the value of the goods being purchased. The 12% is uniform to all. Equity. In equity, taxation power must, be, must observe the ability to pay of the taxpayers for example those who earn more should pay more taxes and those who earn less should pay less taxes equity is being observed in the case of income taxation wherein the minimum wage earners are exempted from the tax and the middle income earners are subject to tax but the tax rates are graduated for example 20 percent 25 percent and 30 percent this is also under progressivity because in progressivity it means to say the more you earn the more you pay the tax rates are being progressive from lower to higher depending on the amount being taxed the third constitutional limitation is the non-impairment of obligations and contracts this is especially true if the contract has already been consummated before the tax law was implemented. For example, today, our VAT rate is 12%. For example, in the next five years, there will be a law to be passed which would say 15% VAT. Whatever transactions we have today, until such time, will be subject only to 12%. The tax law implementing or imposing 15% cannot be retroactively implemented because it will impair those transactions which are already consummated before the law was effective. Fourth, non-imprisonment for non-payment of poll tax. A poll tax is a community tax. It is a cedula. In our constitution, it is said that no one should be imprisoned for non-payment of poll tax. While it is true that everyone is required to pay poll tax or community tax, but no one shall be imprisoned for non-payment of it. For example, if we are 18 years old, we should pay the poll tax or community tax. However, if we cannot pay the poll tax, it is not proper for the government to arrest you because it is said in the Constitution. Next is the exemption from taxes of all revenues and assets of a non-stock and non-profit educational institution, including grants, endowments, donations, and contributions for educational purposes. Let us remember that this limitation talks about all revenues and assets of non-stock and non-profit educational institution. For example, Father Saturnino Orgos University is a non-stock, non-profit educational institution. Currently, all its revenues arising from tuition, matriculation, and etc. are exempted from the tax. Also, its assets like the properties, the buildings, the buses, and every assets in, in FSUU are exempted from the tax provided that these assets and revenues are used for educational purposes next is exemption of charitable institution personages or convents mosques and non-profit cemeteries in all lands 
buildings and improvements actually directly and exclusively used for religious, charitable, and educational purpose. So, in this case, we are talking of the charitable institutions, provided, again, that these um, buildings, by the way, uh, this limitation only talks about the charitable institution, convents, non-profit cemeteries, and all lands, buildings. So, this, this limitation talks only on the property, provided that this property are actually directly and exclusively used for religious, charitable, or educational purpose. In contrast with the other one, with this, this, this talks of all revenues and assets of non-stock non-profit. However, in the second one, we have the buildings provided they're actually directly and exclusively used for religious purpose. The next one is the rule requiring that all appropriations, revenue, and tariff bills shall originate exclusively from the House of Representatives. So, the House of Representatives is actually the Congress. So, in making tax laws, when the legis body wants to enact a tax law, it must be originated or it must be originating from the Congress, the House of Representatives or the lower house. The reason for this is because the House of Representatives or the lower house knows their districts very well. Unlike the Senate, which is the upper house, do not really know or has no direct connection with their district or the provinces. So, when the government, for example, when the government wants to enact a law, that law or that bill must come from the lower house, the Congress. However, the Senate can have their own version. How, For example, if today the congressman thought or wrote a, uh, a, a bill, a tax bill. The Senate is not precluded from having their own version of the bill. However, for the bill to pass, the Senate must wait for the bill coming from the Congress because it will be unconstitutional for the Senate to pass a law without such law coming from the Congress. The next is necessity of an appropriation before any money be paid out of the public treasury. So any public or any government funds must be first appropriated in our Appropriation Act. Every year, the government or the, the state has to enact this law so that the money, the government funds, can be appropriated and can be used. And again, it will be illegal or unconstitutional for the government to spend money without the bill or without the Appropriation Act. Next, we have non appropriation of public money or property for the use, benefit, or support of any sect, church, or system of religion. It is a a fact that our funds, our government funds, should not be used for any religious uh, activities because there is a separation of the church and the state. Next, a voting requirement of majority of all members of Congress in connection with the legislative grant of tax exemption. So, in the case in the case of granting tax exemption, let's say, for example, the Congress wants to grant certain individuals or certain corporations or certain um, class of taxpayers for an exemption, a tax exemption. 
there must be a concurrence of majority of all members of the Congress before such exemption can be passed. Next, we have the necessity of an appropriation before money. Okay. Non-impairment of the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court in tax cases. As we have said earlier, the power to tax shall only be exercised by the legislative body of the government. The executive and the judiciary are not allowed to enact tax laws or to exercise the taxation power. However, if there is any contestion or any dispute between the taxpayer and the government, the Supreme Court can decide, can step in and decide whether the case is, uh, is valid or not. So, as I have said earlier, that only the legis body can exercise taxation power. After the enactment of the law, the executive department or executive branch can now implement such tax laws. Next, we have the president's power to veto. A power to veto is the power of the president of any administration to disapprove certain provision of the bill or certain provisions or the entire bill itself. For example, in 2017, December 2017, President Duterte has vetoed some items of the train law that was a bill before. So, certain items like the offshore, uh, offshore regional offshore units, there are some provisions which are being disapproved because it was deemed uh, damaging on the part of the regional offshore units. So, however, the other provisions of such bill was approved. Thus, the train law was effective uh, last January 2018.